Sudan's Prime Minister survived an assassination attempt Monday after a place in the capital Khartoum, Sudanese state media said. Premier Abdullah Hamdouk's family confirmed that he was safe following the explosion which targeted his convoy. No one immediately claimed responsibility for the attack. The leader was appointed Prime Minister last August after a pre-democracy protest forced the military to remove the autocratic President Omar al-Bashir and replace it with a civilian-led government. Military generals remain the de facto rulers of the country and have showed little willingness to hand over power to the civilian-led administration. Scuppling Afghan president rivals threatened to both declare themselves a president in dueling inauguration ceremonies Monday, throwing plans for negotiations with the Taliban into chaos. Those talks among Afghans on both sides of the conflict were supposed to be the next crucial step in a U.S.-Taliban peace deal signed less than two weeks ago. But the dispute between the top two candidates in last year's presidential election over who actually won means the Afghan government side appears unable to present a united front. Washington and the Taliban insurgents are looking to hammer out such thorny issues as women's rights, free speech and the fate of tens of thousands of armed men on both sides of the 18-year war. Those negotiations were set to be held Tuesday in Oslo. North Korea has fired three projectiles, Seoul's military said Monday, a week after it launched what the South said appeared to be two short-range ballistic missiles. The South's Joint Chiefs of Staff said in a statement, three devices were fired eastwards over the sea from the Sanduk area in South Hamyang province. It added the military is monitoring for additional launches and maintaining readiness. Monday's launch was the North's second weapons test in a week. Germany said on Monday the European Union is considering taking in up to 1,500 migrants' children who are currently housed in Greek camps. The government said in a statement the humanitarian solution is being negotiated at the European level for a coalition of the willing to take in these children. Meanwhile, migration crisis talks were said to be held between Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan and senior EU officials in Brussels on Monday. Tens of thousands of asylum seekers have been trying to break through the land border from Turkey for a week after Ankara announced it would no longer prevent people from trying to cross into the European Union. Turkey, which hosts around 4 million mostly Syrian refugees, have repeatedly railed against what it describes as unfair burden sharing. China has closed most of the makeshift hospitals opened to receive coronavirus patients in the epidemic epic centers as the number of new infections in the country hit a record low. There were 40 new cases nationwide, the National Health Commission said Monday, the lowest number of fresh cases since it started reporting the data in January. Most of the new cases, as well as 22 new deaths, were in Hubei, the central province at the epic center of the outbreak. The deaths, which were all in Hubei except one, bring the country's toll to 3,119. Germany and France withdrew their representatives from North Korea and closed their missions, the British ambassador in Pyongyang said, amid growing concern in the isolated country about the spread of the coronavirus. North Korea has not confirmed any cases of the coronavirus, but it has made foreigners from any country that has reported a case spend 30 days in quarantine. It has also reinforced border checks. North Korea is sandwiched between China, where the virus emerged late last year and has infected more than 80,000 people, and South Korea, where the virus has spread readily over the past few weeks to infect nearly 7,500 people. Britain's ambassador to North Korea, Colin Crocs, did not say why his German and French colleagues were leaving North Korea, nor did he mention the coronavirus. The first hearing in the trial of four fugitives suspects in the downing of Malaysian Airlines Flight 17 is set to start in Amsterdam on Monday, more than five years after the plane was downed in Ukraine. 
Prosecutors said that the suspects, three Russians and a Ukrainian, helped arrange the Russian missile system used to shoot down MH17, a civilian aircraft. The suspects are believed to be in Russia and are not expected to attend. MH17 was flying from Amsterdam to Kuala Lumpur on July 17, 2014, when it was shot down by a missile fired from territory held by pro-Moscow rebels amid fighting in eastern Ukraine, killing all 298 aboard. Russia has denied any involvement. According to news reports, U.S. aviation regulators plan to require Boeing rewire all 737 MAX aircraft before allowing the troubled planes to fly again. The MAX has been grounded worldwide since the Ethiopian Airlines flight crashed shortly after takeoff last March, less than six months after the same model was involved in a similar fatal accident in Indonesia. Both accidents saw uncontrolled drops in the aircraft's nose in the moments before the planes crashed, which investigators have blamed on the model's anti-stall flight system. Regulators have since concluded that the current wiring layout violated safety standards to prevent short circuits that could cause similar sharp drops in aircraft pitch. Oil markets tumbled the most since the Gulf War in 1991 on Monday after the disintegration of the OPEC Plus alliance treasured an all-out price war among the world's biggest producers. In one of the most dramatic bouts of selling ever, Brent futures sank by 31% in a matter of seconds after the open of trading in Asia on Monday after already suffering their biggest loss since the global financial crisis at the end of last week. As Brent collapsed as low as 31 US dollars per barrel, Goldman Sachs Group warned prices could drop into the $20. The cataclysmic collapse will resonate through the energy industry from giants like ExxonMobil Corp to smaller shale drillers in West Texas. China and Hong Kong shares slumped on Monday as fears over the economic impact of the spreading coronavirus epidemic and a sudden plunge in oil prices battered global financial markets. Tokyo's benchmark tumbled more than 6%, while Sydney, Seoul and Hong Kong posted steep loses as well. Shares also sank in Middle East trading on Sunday. Energy stocks dragged the most after the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia slashed crude oil prices, with the energy index in Hong Kong falling by more than 10 percent. Lebanon is about to enter the crucial first phase of talks aimed at renegotiating its 30 billion US dollars in euro bonds after saying at the weekend it won't pay dollar debt due on Monday. The government's declaration on Saturday that it won't repay the $1.2 billion euro bond puts the country on course for the first default in its history as it copes with dwindling foreign currency reserves and inflation running in double digits. Talks will be complicated by high foreign ownership of some of the bonds and political divisions that have left the economy on the ropes. Lebanon came undone after months of protests, fitted its world's financial crisis in decades, just as remittance from abroad, the main source of hard currency revenue, slowed to a tickle. Brazilian football legend Ronaldinho did not deliberately use a fake passport and should be released by authorities in Paraguay, his lawyer said. The two-time World Player of the Year and his brother Roberto, who was detained with him, spent their third night behind bars in the capital on Sunday after using forged travel documents to enter the country. Their Brazilian lawyer said he would ask for the bear to be released and allowed to return to their home country when they next appear before a judge on Monday. He also said that prosecutors had agreed that the footballer had acted in good faith and the decision by a judge to order their detention was unwanted. Eric Bestrol scored 23 points, including a pair of free throws with 51.7 seconds remaining, and the Golden State Warriors beat the Philadelphia 118-114 on Saturday night to snap a 10-game home losing streak. 
playing once again without Stephen Curry, the Warriors trailed most of the game and were down by 8 entering the fourth quarter. Curry, who returned from a 58-game absence to play Thursday night, was diagnosed with the flu and was held out. The Warriors termed in a seasonal flu and said that Curry has begun treatment. The team also said that Curry is not the specific risk of coronavirus.